We're gonna go swab a kid for RSV. You're shockingly excited. <laughs> it's okay. It's All okay. right. Who's that? Who is that? That's a handsome boy. It's like, go away. We're about to see a baby that's sick. Oh, not another sick baby. Let's go take a look. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, good to you. see you again. You too. Hi, buddy. Oh, you don't look like you feel so good. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Tell me the story. What's been going on? So he's had a really bad cough since about Monday. Okay, today um, is Friday, so four days of cough. Yeah. Um, it was sounding really hoarse in the beginning, and that kind of went away. And... Um, now he just has frequent cough attacks so bad that um, he was making himself vomit a few times. Okay. I'm hearing really good breath sounds, so you can hear, right? So you hear that the air movement is fine. Okay. So we're not in any kind of crisis as far as at the lung level. You don't want to miss a bad pneumonia, which will sound almost like crackly of hair, rubbing hair together, oh, just okay. we call that rowels. Definitely not hearing that. I am hearing a little bit of transmitted popping. So, you know, when you've got mucus in your upper airways, uh, you hear a congested cough sometimes and you just feel like there's a lot of mucus. Mm -hmm. That's That noise can be heard down it's here because, right, it's just one big tube to the lungs. So um, I hear a little bit of that popping here and there. It's not in the lungs. Okay. It's just mucus up in that trachea, upper airway, okay. that pop, pop, pops. So, so we don't have pneumonia. We don't have wheezing as such. Okay. Um, and uh, so that's good to know. Now, those of you who are watching this, you're looking at this beautiful little face, and that is not a happy face today, right? This is a young one who I know from before. Mm -hmm. In fact, you guys have seen, if you've watched this channel, they, he's been a star on this show before. Four days old, I think. Yeah, oh he was a little baby. Wow, that's um, But yeah, we're, he, this is the, the look of a, I don't feel good. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's just like, ah, oh, I don't feel good. And we definitely want to figure it out. So just to walk you through the thought process for a pediatric patient of this age, how many months old are we now? Uh, 15. 15 months. Okay. It's a little over a year. And in that first two years of life with a bad cough, uh, there's a list of things that you think about. In today's world, everybody's thinking about COVID. That's low on my list of concerns. Not saying it's impossible, but it's very unlikely. Mm -hmm. Astray syncytial virus, RSV, <coughs> is one of the leading causes of a wheezing, congested cough, just like what you heard there. That, mm -hmm. that is a top of my list just to, because I know it's in the community. Um, you described also something that brings to mind whooping cough, and that is adults who have whooping cough will cough, 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 cough. <gasps> Whoop, cough, 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 cough. <coughs> when I try to mimic it, I cough. Um, but kids don't have the whoop. They'll okay. just have a cough, 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 choke, gag, and throw up. Okay. And you describe that. Right. So I don't think it's whooping cough okay. because that is so rare. Okay. But still, it's on our list of possibilities. So the plan, folks, is we've, we're going to test for RSV just because that's most likely, and we'll see what that shows. That that's rapid? a nose swab. It's a rapid test. We'll have the answer here before uh, the end of this video. We're, you're going to know. If it's not RSV, then because of the possibility... Hi, buddy. Hi, buddy. Oh. <laughs> he just heard about possible other tests. <laughs> if it's not RSV, we're going to do a quick finger poke, CBC, complete blood count. We can kind of get an idea of whether there's anything serious going on by checking that lab. And then we can swab for whooping cough. That's a send out test that we get a result in a day or two, as well as do a rapid COVID and a rapid flu. That way, we hopefully will pin down exactly what's going on. It's not essential because we're not in so much trouble that, like if you're thinking hospitalization, you've got to know, right? What, you right. don't want to miss a, a treatable condition. So, so the real reason for trying to figure it out is, can, is there a treatable condition we can identify and get you better quicker and avoid, you know, worsening, right? Right. right. So that's what we're looking at. Okay. And uh, yeah, we'll give you the update here in a moment. Can you see the little two lines? Yep. Like a pregnancy test? Two lines means positive? Yep. That simplifies, yes, that I don't have to do COVID. Good. <laughs> Website, it usually has that information oh. listed. <laughs> what a nutcase. 
I have some good news for you. Check this out. It's not super, super dark red, but it's a clear line there for positive when you have two lines. Okay. This is RSV. Oh. Okay. So the good news is it's not COVID, it's not pertussis, okay. it's not bacterial needing antibiotics. So RSV is, um, this virus gets down into the deep into the lungs, so you can get pneumonia, you can get wheezing. Those are, and pneumonia is gonna be that thick cough with mucus in the lungs. Okay. And, um, and the, the course of the illness is you're getting worse, which means more cough, more trouble breathing um, for about a week. And then you can get better over the next week or it can take a month. So that's okay. the bad part. So we're just four or five days into this. How many days are we? Yep, yeah, Monday. Yeah, say like days. maybe six, right? Okay, so hopefully we're near the worst, okay? Okay. But it, it can have this sort of up and down course as far as the symptoms you see as a parent, because if you think about all this mucus that's in the little airways down in your lungs, if you get some mucus plugs in bigger airways, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're coughing. There's mucus plugs, you just you, you feel the need to cough. Okay. So you have this cough, 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 which you've described. Right. And um, so that, that will sound like, oh my gosh, they're worse. Mm -hmm. But no, it's just the mucus plugging and all that, right? Okay. So you get this worsening up and down for the first week. You kind of bottom out, worst case scenario, you've got another week where you're just sort of not getting better, but you're not getting worse. Okay. And then over the final week or two, you gradually get better with ups and downs. So I just okay. want to prepare you for the long haul. Yeah, and it's a real mucusy thing, right? Okay. right? So since you're nursing, one good thing to know is if a kid can stay latched and suck, suck, and breathe, Mm -hmm. they, their oxygen's fine. Okay. Okay. Because the, the question will come, well, when do we go back to the hospital? Right. Well, if your oxygen, if you have RSV bronchiolitis, RSV pneumonia, and your oxygen gets down in the low 90s, or certainly if it dipped into the 80s, you need to be hospitalized just for oxygen. Okay. <clears throat> so that's worst case scenario. You need oxygen support. And how do you tell if you're at that point? couple clues. I mean, the best thing is if you have a pulse oximeter, they're cheap now and he might no, be able, you could probably get one. They yeah. have them at the pharmacies or on okay. Amazon. Okay. Uh, they're like 20, 30, 40 bucks. Okay. And they yeah, just, okay. they just sit on a finger. And if your pulse ox, the highest number you get is the accurate number. Okay. Because it reads each like beep, 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 beep. That's heartbeat. Okay. And if you go beep, beep, and you miss one or two, it's gonna average. Okay. So you need a consistent beep, beep, beep for about five, 10 seconds, and then you'll see that's the nice high reading. Okay. That's the accurate reading. Okay. So if it jumps all over the place, and it's 90, but then it's 96, 96 is the correct number. Okay. The highest number you get is the accurate number, and you want it above mm -hmm. 90. If you're above 93, you're fine. Okay. 90, 90, what was it when 96. she just checked yeah. it? Okay, because it was like 91, 92, and she was like, that can't be right, yeah. and she kept it going. Right, So because it was averaging, okay. missing some beats. So you always go for the best number you get. That's the accurate number. And so that's one really good way. If you're nursing and, and a baby can stay latched long enough to have several breaths and they're not pulling off and gasping for air, okay. then their oxygen's fine. Now, if they happen to be real snotty, like what we just right. witnessed, right? Yeah, you're going to pull off because your nose is plugged. Right. Now you plug your mouth with the breath and they can't right. breathe. Right. But it's not because the lungs aren't working. It's just because their nose is plugged. Yeah. And if you wear a mask like I am, I can't breathe just with a mask. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how kids do it. Um, okay. So you're just gonna make sure we've got enough oxygen on board. Focus okay. on hydration, right? So okay. you're nursing, that's great. If he wants to nurse more and you're willing, do it. Okay. Because if he's hydrated, he's fine. If you get dehydrated and you've got a lot of secretions, those secretions get thicker, harder to move. What are secretions, pardon the interruption? So that, that junky cough, the snot in your nose, right? The mucus that's in your airways. If it gets thicker, it's harder to, to move air. So being well hydrated, drinking okay. plenty of fluids. If you're nursing, nursing. He's old enough to drink other fluids as well. Mm -hmm. so, so just, you know, if he's not eating as well as you wish he would, yeah. as long as he's drinking enough, we're good. Okay. Anything else that you recommend other than water and breast milk? 
Like, um, so it would be supplementing with Pedialyte or anything like that? Or? Pedialyte's last resort when okay. you're dehydrated. Okay. Okay. He's okay. not dehydrated, and you've got enough breast milk, it sounds like. Okay. So I wouldn't go to Pedialyte okay. uh, unless he's seeming to you like he's really getting dehydrated and kind of getting a okay. little floppy from that. Um, I mean, fresh squeezed juices are great, okay. right? Okay. And fruits and vegetables, and yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he usually loves that, but this morning I tried yeah. to give him some I mean, raspberries. You think about watermelon. I mean, that's mostly water, right? Right. But, but it's it's fine. It's loaded with okay. vitamin C and other good nutrients. So yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So we'll do like smoothies and yeah, yeah, yeah juicing and smoothies okay. and and whatever he's willing to eat that's that's healthy. Okay. That's good. And so, yeah, the only reason to come back is if his oxygen's dropping, you're okay. struggling with feeding, which okay. would be a clue that the oxygen's okay. dropping. Right, okay. Uh, or if something new develops. I mean, in the context of a viral illness, which RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, it is rare, but you can get bacterial infections on top of that. Oh, wow. And you would probably see all of a sudden return of very high fevers, okay. really acting out of it, like something has changed, okay. as opposed to the, you're, you're gonna see the good and bad cough, and you know, up and down here. We should be about at the end of it. So um, as far as the worsening part. And so now you're just kind of okay. holding him through the getting better stretch. Okay. Yeah. So okay. about a and month roughly all together? Yeah, probably maximum another two to three weeks. Okay. Um, this is hardest on the youngest kids. So if you have friends who have infants, right. you might want to stay away from them. Okay. Uh, you know, big kids who get this or adults, it's a cold. Okay. Our airways are big enough. We can handle a little extra secretions. No big deal. Okay. Or we've already had it. We've got relative immunity against it. Okay. So it just, it never really takes hold. Okay. Um, so just for future planning, kids who've had RSV are at about a 50-50 chance of developing wheezing later in life that might be called asthma. Okay. So that's just a bummer. Yeah. Uh, it seems to have that tendency of increased risk for asthma. Okay. Uh, so we'll just see. Hopefully not. Okay. And uh, also for the next year or so, every subsequent cold seems to almost look like this. Okay. It, it's something like RSV just takes a hit on the lungs. Okay. And they just seem more vulnerable to triggering you back into mucus and wheezing a bit. Okay. Um, is he in daycare? No, nope, he's okay. at home with me. Well, that's an advantage. I mean, normally daycare is not that big of a deal, but boy, when you've had RSV and you're in daycare and you're getting exposed all the time, right. it's probably a really good thing for him that he doesn't have to go to daycare. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, buddy. You just got to get through this. I know you will. <laughs> I know you will. Can you give a wave? Can you say thank say bye -bye. you? Bye. <laughs> bye bye. 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 It's not awesome. usually a shy guy. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. There is a classic case of RSV bronchiolitis, respiratory syncytial virus bronchiolitis. I'm Dr. Paul. Thanks for watching.